Chief Joseph was a man who was thrusted into conflict, and was forced to lead a broken, tired group of people through a grueling journey. He would lose his family, his home, and his life, but he would save the lives of hundreds of Nez Perce and change the fate of the Nez Perce as a whole. Chief Joseph's peaceful and diplomatic actions during the Nez Perce retreat in 1877, including his actions in Washington, D.C. afterwards, were monumental in the preservation of the Nez Perce and their culture. Due to Chief Joseph's civil leadership, caring about and feeding his people, many Nez Perce survived the grueling trek to Canada, and those who remained in the U.S returned home because of Chief Joseph's arguments. This preservation became Chief Joseph's legacy, because that was what allowed the Nez Perce to thrive culturally and communally today. Well, contrary to what a lot of people believe, Joseph was not a war chief. He was more along the lines of a civil chief. The Nez Perce are a major Native American tribe which lives in the northwestern United States and part of Canada. The Nez Perce was once one of the wealthiest and largest Native American tribes in the entire western United States, trading and selling to gain material wealth from settlers. The tribe had many great leaders, one such being Chief Joseph the Elder, a wise man who was one of the first leaders to be on good terms with the colonists, even crossing to their faith and language. However, the colonists would turn out to betray him and his people, and before Chief Joseph could fix everything, he died, passing his role to his son, Hin Ma Tu Ya Lot Kekt, or Chief Joseph the Younger. Chief Joseph the Younger was an extremely passive and peaceful leader, choosing to settle conflicts with words. Chief Joseph lived in the Wadawa Valley and governed the Wadawa tribe, a small settlement of people who lived peacefully in the green grass and bright sunlight. Chief Joseph was handed a huge issue when his father passed, the white settlers. The settlers were driven by a sense of manifest destiny, to create civilization everywhere and anywhere they could. They wanted to take as much land as possible to fit the needs of their growing population. The, the representatives of the government and the army were men of their times. They were under a different uh, uh, ethical guide, if you will. They were looking at expanding and that the Native Americans uh, perhaps were an obstacle to them. Due to the fact that most civilization started in the East, Chief Joseph and the Nez Perce were actually one of the last tribes that had to deal with these settlers. Eventually, however, the growing population spilled into the Nez Perce territory. The Nez Perce agreed to a treaty known as the Treaty of 1855, seeming to reach a compromise. The Nez Perce lost some land, but still had plenty for their needs. This was fine until 1863, when gold was discovered on the land set aside for the Nez Perce. The Nez Perce were then forced into another treaty, this one known as the Treaty of 1863, which gave away nearly 90% of the Nez Perce's rightful land. Not only this, but the Nez Perce weren't even allowed to live on the land at all. They were forced to move to a much smaller allotment of land to make way for the settlers, and if they didn't, there would be war. That's what precipitated the whole war. But Joseph really wanted to, he was going to the reservation. He had accepted the fact that that's where he had to go with his people. Contrary to what some believe, Chief Joseph actually agreed to move to the new reservation. He was leading his tribe to the new reservation when a few young Nez Perce men went on a rampage, killing white settlers in revenge for the death of a friend. This act prompted retaliation from the U.S. Army, and multiple high-ranking officers, including Colonel Miles, General Howard, and Colonel Sturgis, were sent on the Nez Perce with hundreds of men. Knowing what vengeance the murders would bring, Chief Joseph, as well as other chiefs such as Looking Glass, Yellow Wolf, Olicott, White Bird, and Lean Elk began a nearly 1,170-mile retreat, which would include massive battles, death, and hardship. You have American citizens that numbered over 3 million, and the Nez Perce uh, probably numbered at about nine to 11,000 people. And he, wa he didn't want to go to war, but uh, he was forced into it as a result of the tragedies that happened down in the canyon. 
While most people believe Chief Joseph was the mastermind behind the battles, he was actually one of the lowest contributors to the battle strategy. Instead, his brother Alicot gave most of the orders and commands. Chief Joseph busied himself with keeping his people safe, warm, fed, hydrated, and emotionally stable. He focused on civil leadership and was known for his clever mind and sincere heart. Joseph was in charge of, of people in their everyday lives, uh, feeding, feeding his, his family and, and his, his band, making sure people were, were uh, clothed properly, and their general well-being. He was not a war chief, he was a, a speaker for the people, but he was just one of many of the leaders at the time. He was thinking of everybody else, not himself. And that's the, the perfect leader, actually. As the battles and retreat continued, the other leading chiefs of the Nez Perce died, until only 15 miles from the Canadian border, the Nez Perce decided to rest in the infamous Pere Paw Valley. Well, he was, I just wanted to say that he's not the only chief, but he's the one that you know, got most of the credit because most of his brothers, the other chiefs, died, and that kind of like weighed heavy on his shoulders. And that was, that was another reason why he he wanted he chose that area to wait, and that's why you know they got surrounded. While the Nez Perce camped in the valley, the U.S. Army continued their approach, finally catching the Nez Perce. The army raided the settlement, killing men, women, and children. Whoever could escape ran for the hills and it is believed most died of starvation or hypothermia. So he took it upon himself to uh, give the surrender speech. Finally, unable to take the slaughter anymore, Chief Joseph, one of the only surviving chiefs, surrendered to the invading forces, giving one of the most heartfelt and sincere speeches in Native American history. It wasn't looked at as a surrender, more of a draw. Um, both sides lost. Neither side really won anything in this engagement. Um, he wanted peace, and he knew he couldn't defeat the, the soldiers. They would just devastate his people. This surrender was consoled by Colonel Miles, who swore that the Nez Perce would be able to return home. They were not. The tribe was then relocated to Kansas, where many died of diseases which they couldn't have built immunities against, while others perished from the extreme weather shift. Chief Joseph, wanting to save his people, traveled to Washington, D.C. to plead the Nez Perce case. He showed that his people were dying, and claimed that they were promised different, and finally said that the whole retreat was caused due to the Treaty of 1863, which he claimed violated their rights. Eventually, his people were allowed to move closer to home, but they were never able to return to the Wallowa Valley. Chief Joseph, however, died before he could make it back. And, in a death report later filed, the doctor claimed he died of a broken heart. Since the Nez Perce retreat, the Nez Perce have changed and advanced, thanks to Chief Joseph's actions. Since his death in 1904, at the age of 64, the current population of 3,499 Nez Perce has developed a tribal government, a general council, a tribal executive committee, and a subcommittee. The Nez Perce have also created multiple tribal affiliates, including the Ni Mi Pu Health, the Nez Perce Tribal Housing Authority, the Nez Perce Horse Registry, and the Nez Perce Tribal Enterprise Executive Office, demonstrating the expansive influence the Nez Perce have in modern life. Many people recognize Chief Joseph's importance in Nez Perce history, commemorating him and his legacy in places such as Chief Joseph Dam, the only dam in the Northwest named after an American Indian, as well as Joseph, Oregon an entire town named after Chief Joseph, and Joseph Canyon, once again honoring his memory through name. The Nez Perce have been able to create stunning artworks, including this blanket made recently by the Nez Perce, and powerful music, such as the tracks composed by Sam Morris. The Nez Perce, due to their extended survival because of Chief Joseph, were even represented in the national government by Claudia Kaufman, a Nez Perce woman who took the Washington State Senator position from 2006 to 2010. As you can see, Chief Joseph's legacy lives in every Nez Pierce, and in every song, artwork, action, and story they make.